I'm Yvonne Smith. I teach in the College of Business and Public Management. And I teach strategy, um, so both at the undergraduate and the graduate level. There's a great deal of difference between the two, but which I prefer, I couldn't tell you, because the undergraduates are, are going out into the workforce and they're going to be the people who are going to make, make a significant difference. Uh, they just approach the subject differently than the graduate students who have been in the workforce. They understand exactly what it is they need to get. And so, um, and they, ha they bring so much passion and so much experience to the table. So, which I, I couldn't tell you, but it is fun to teach both because then you have a nice variety. Also, you learn a lot. Fifteen to twenty years, something like that. Well, I was at another, several other universities before Laverne came to Laverne about uh, seven years ago now, and have enjoyed it here very much. Well, I grew up in Africa, so. Uh, yeah, my parents were educators in Africa, so when I came to the United States and married an American um, and knew that I was staying here, the thing I did was go into business. Um, I grew up in, in, in the Bantu tribes and they're very entrepreneurial. Uh, they have an absolutely rotten economy in Zaire where I grew up, but the people themselves are extremely entrepreneurial. So when I came to the United States and knew I was staying here, I married a man who is himself entrepreneurial. So we started businesses. Um, two or three different businesses would, for example, we, uh, we redid Victorian houses back in the time in Portland, Oregon, when that was very cool. And the city council was giving 0% loans for redoing these beautiful, beautiful houses. So we did that for a few years. And then after a while, we decided to uh, begin a classical record store. That was before the internet. And it turned out to be a very fun thing to do. We had clients as far as Hawaii who would fly in to come to our store. I know, interesting, isn't it? And now you can just, with the click of a mouse, buy anything you want. I am what they call a third culture person, and that is a person who has grown up with parents in one culture, grown up in another culture. And in fact, I have more, psychologically as it were, in common with the Peru Peruvian ambassador's daughter than I did with my peers here in the U.S. So um, I didn't have a lot of the life experiences my, my, my peers had. So when we came to the States, there, was, there were things to learn. It was another culture to learn. And um, one, the third culture people tend to either chameleon into whatever culture they happen to be in, or they celebrate the differences. And it's one extreme or the other. I was one of those that celebrated the differences. So. I had a really nice experience moving into the United States. Oh, the issues of millennials. Uh, a person that I do a lot of research co-authoring with uh, got very frustrated with the media and, the, and its portrayal of millennials. She had millennial kids. Um, she called me up and she said, oh, and I said, well, let's research this and see what the people who are actually studying this generation have to say. So we started doing that. And uh, through some other papers that we had written, well, first of all, we, we came across this conundrum that the millennials, while they've been in groups forever, ever since they were in kindergarten, in work groups, they aren't very effective. And that's something that we had noticed in classrooms. It, it really, from the Gen X to the to the Millennials, it, it's gone down, and we weren't sure why. So that was the first conundrum, and we started exploring that. And uh, 
some of our research started with that, and then we started bringing other people in, doing tests here and there, and so it's it's become a three or four people interested in this kind of thing. It's become kind of a collaborative research group, and that's fun too. The thing that startled me the most was that the, the, the difference between ambiguity and, and precision, the, the millennial need for precision. I had kind of known that and sort of experienced that and sort of even catered to that without really realizing it was a, a phenomena that had been studied. And um, so when I came across that, I went, oh, that's what's happening. Oh, Okay, now I get it, but it's also a bit distressing because what we need in this society is, is uh, innovation, and innovation comes directly out of ambiguity. And so if people are find ambiguity threatening, that's a bad thing for the future. And I realized that it's not everyone, and, and it's just a, a generational characteristic, and not everybody is like that. And there's some very creative things happening in the millennial generation. But that is something that needs to be addressed somehow, because innovation ain't going to happen without ambiguity.